Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of the Daily News Clips. But before I get into that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for your support and thank you for the wonderful comments that you make. I really do appreciate every person that comes to my channel. So thank you very much. I have several items for today's news clips. The first one is titled, America's Adults in the Room Are Revolting. And the reason why I highlight this particular article is because it irked me to no end. I'm going to read just a little bit of it to you to show you why it irked me so much. Brett Stevens. Hi, Gail. I think the theme for last week was the return of adult supervision. So begins the conversation between faux conservative columnist Brett Stevens and faux liberal columnist Gail Collins in the New York Times this morning. The op-ed title over a portrait of House Speaker Mike Johnson, Some of the Adults in the Room Aren't Who We Thought They Would Be. The header is a callback to the famed <coughs> excuse me, Times editorial by a then anonymous Trump staffer who we now know was Homeland Security Chief of Staff Miles Taylor, pledging himself to the resistance and assuring America that there were adults in the room in Trump's administration. In 2018, as now, the word adult has no ideological significance beyond orientation to the orange Napoleon. The Times is conferring adult status to Johnson for defying MAGA folks in his party to help pass two huge bills, one expanding surveillance, another funding aid for Israel and Ukraine, and Taiwan, which is not mentioned in the article. What irritated me about this is saying that the adults in the room are the ones who agree with their ideology is a slap in the face to every adult in the room who doesn't agree with their ideology. It's an absolute insult, and it just irritated me to no end. I'll put the link in the description so you can read the whole article, but when they use phrases like this, it just it just really gets under my skin. The second thing I have is a Tucker Carlson uh, interview called Ukraine is Not a Democracy. And it's about 30 minutes long, and it, it's kind of uh, disturbing to me. Tucker has been for some time now featuring people who say that we should not be in Ukraine that we have no interest in our country, that we shouldn't be supporting Ukraine. I think that's a certainly a debatable point. I think that we, as Americans, we should support any country in the world that wants to have a democratic or a constitutional Republican form of government. And any country that wants to have that, we should be supportive of. I just said that, didn't I? <laughs> but what he's talking about in this particular interview is that inside of Ukraine, and I'm, I'm hoping that some of my Ukrainian viewers will see this and, and reply in the comments. He's saying that inside of Ukraine, Russian Orthodox Church members are being discriminated against and jailed and having their churches taken away from them. If this is true, that's very disturbing. That is not how a democracy is run, and that makes me think that Ukraine is much more authoritarian than I thought they were. So I would love it if some of my Ukrainian viewers would tell me if, they, if this is really true, if what, what he says is going on is actually going on. But you'll have to watch the whole thing to see what the context is. The next article I have is Mission Impossible, 
Democrats make Trump a martyr. And this one I found interesting because if you're at all familiar with him, <coughs> Stephen A. Smith, who is a uh, commentator on ESPN and now has his own podcast, he's kind of branching out into uh, his opinions on other matters than sports, um, had some comments to say about what's going on with Trump. He says, I listened as Chris Como told a story about an unnamed hip-hop artist complaining that it took a rich white man like Trump being abused for people to see the, the maladministration of justice black people have always known. What did his guest Stephen A. Smith think? Stephen A. Smith, no question. That hip-hop artist who called you, he's right on the money. Here's the sad part. It gives credence to the argument Trump made during a speech weeks ago where he talked about black folks relating to him. Now, what the hell would black folks have in common with a guy that, that was born on third base thinking he hit a home run? born with the proverbial spoon in his mouth. It's the legal system. I can say this because 95% of the time I voted Democratic. I'm looking at a Democratic Party that looks at the black community that says, we are there for you, we are there for you. But when it's time to vote, <laughs> you want to talk to black people about what you're doing for them and how you're on their side. But this man right here, who's the presumptive GOP nominee, is in a position to literally get back into the White House because what you're doing to him, we find fairly relatable to things that have been done to folks in our community, and it's happened for decades. There's no escaping that fact, and Trump pointing it out, and being accurate in doing so, is perhaps the height of embarrassment for the Democratic Party, in my estimation. This exchange was preceded by a classic Stephen A-ism. When you got four indictments and 91 counts and two impeachments and civil suits in excess of 454 million, but he still keeps marching forward, marching forward, gaining momentum, the only way you get him is to beat him, and they don't seem to be able to do that either. And I'm quite disgusted by it, to be quite honest with you. So I, th I thought this was interesting because Stephen A. is pointing out a fact that is true that there are many in the black community that look at what's being done to Trump and they think, hey, they've done this to us for decades. And so they, they sympathize with Trump and they might even be voting for him this time. Ones who've never voted Republican before in their lives. So it'll be interesting to see what comes of it, but I just thought it was interesting that Stephen A. said that, so I thought I'd highlight it for you. And then here's an article about police arresting students at Yale University as hundreds stage anti-Israel protest. I don't have anything specific to say about this other than the fact that I've talked about, excuse me, man, I need to get a drink of water just a second. I've talked before about the fact that anti-Semitism is on the rise both here in America and around the world, and it's disgusting to me given what happened in the Holocaust. I mean, we fought a world war and millions of people died to put a stop to this, and yet here we are, almost 100 years after World War II, 80 years at least, and we're, we're, we're right back in the same place we were. It's, it's disgusting. No group, regardless of what it is, no, the color of the skin, the religion, whatever, should be discriminated against, and they shouldn't be treated shabbily by anybody. This is 2024. Can we not finally figure out how to get along on this planet? It's disgusting to me. It really is disgusting. So that's the news clips for today. I, as I always do, I will pray for you that you live an abundant life, that you live a long time, that you're healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I also pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, 
through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.